Okay, we are starting off today with our reptiles of Minnesota. Actually, I break this one into two parts. We're going to be talking about turtles and our lizards first, and then we'll have a whole different um, whole different slideshow notes, all that stuff on snakes. All right, since there's, um, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot of these things, so I like to, to split the category in half here. Um, so reptiles of Minnesota, starting with the turtles, which is some of my favorite. Uh, the first one here is a Blanding's turtle. It was also on the previous slide. Um, it is, it's a pretty big one, right? It's a pretty big one. Now, remember, all of our turtles are going to be um, not necessarily aquatic, but they're going to be around water um, for the most part. So Blanding's turtle is the um, same way here. So it's six to 10 inches in length, so decent size. Um, domed carapace. Now, carapace are the backs of the turtles there, so it's got a dome on it. It's got a yellow throat and chin. And it can actually, if you look at it, its shell, so it's its chest and its back, it can close off that shell. Um, so if it sucks its head, its head and, and hands in there, it'll actually close up and it'll seal it tight around there. So it's a good defense mechanism for them. Uh, this lives in the sand dunes and marshes created in the backwaters of the Mississippi. So you see a lot in um, uh, the kind of southeast area of, of the state. Um, it is a turtle of special interest because its population is on decline nationwide. So it's kind of on the species watch list to try to um, bring back some more Blanding's turtles there. Here's a look at where you would find it in Minnesota. Um, definitely to the uh, east of, eastern side of the state, which like I said, makes sense because that's the more, uh, there's, there's more um, water, it's more aquatic um, versus the western part of the state there. Um, and in general, you know, this um, species is found to the northeast of the continent. There's a look at a Blanding's turtle. It's um, it's plaster on there, the underneath side, looking at its belly, bright yellow. Compare that to our false map turtle. There's a true map turtle too, but our false map turtle is, um, it has these black knobs on the back of its um, shell there. It says five to ten inches in length. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit smaller than the Blanding's turtle. All right, you can see there's someone someone holding one and a hand for reference there. And the females are quite large in this in this species there. That is our false map turtle with the black knobs on the back, kind of the yellow striping on its skin, and the yellow belly to it. Not to be confused with the northern map turtle. All right, so if you take a look at the northern map turtle, it still has that, that yellow striping on its skin. It, its shell, I don't know well you can see this here, but the back of it, it's kind of oval shaped, but then it's also serrated. So it's not a smooth surface. It's kind of jagged as it's going through there. So there's our, like I said, it's our um, northern map turtle. Uh, it's got green skin and yellow lines and rings. Um, and it, it's, its belly is plain and kind of a light yellow. Uh, and like I said, it does not have those black knobs on the carapace there. There's our northern map turtle. Um, next up is the western painted turtle. Now, this is one that you've probably, if you've seen turtles out in the wild, you've probably seen a western painted turtle. Um, they're the most common turtle species in Minnesota. I actually have a pet western painted turtle. Um, they have a smooth and shiny carapace, dark brown to olive green colored. Um, and its belly is very brightly colored, so red to orange with a variety of black markings. It's got this black skin and yellow stripes. Um, once again, you see these things out sunning on logs and all that kind of stuff um, all over the place there. So western painted turtle. Next up, the smooth soft shell turtle. This thing looks like a pancake, all right? I think it's got kind of a funny looking uh, turtle there. Um, its shell is going to be very different. It's not the, the hard, you know, kind of keratin-like or bony shell. It is a leather-like shell, and it's also fairly flexible in there as well, all right? It is tan to brown in color. And then probably the most noticeable thing, other than it looks like a pancake, is it has, you can see its, its rib markings in there, which are interesting there. So there's our soft, or sorry, smooth soft shell turtle, not to be confused with, well, where you'd find that Mississippi River Basin again, um, and then kind of centrally in the state there. Not to be confused with this one, all right, the spiny soft shell. These two are really similar. You see there's not as many 
you can't see the rib markings as well. And there's kind of some black dots on the, on this one in the back. Um, but it's, it looks pretty similar. Um, these guys are mean. They are very territorial. All right. So they'll attack a lot of different things. Um, and if you look at its belly, its belly is very soft and, and white to cream colored in there with the spiny soft shell. So it's turtle number six. Turtle number seven is the snapping turtle. All right. This is the biggest, uh, biggest Minnesota reptile, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's the biggest turtle that we have here in Minnesota. Um, average, so the average snapping turtle size is 14 inches in length. So just over a foot and 30 pounds. All right. The record, and this thing is probably pretty close to that. Its shell would be 20 inches long and 65 pounds. Think about a two foot long shell on that thing. Its carapace is kind of toothed at the back. It's got these large, this large head and really powerful jaws. It's um, I always think its tail kind of looks like, like like Bowser from Mario. It's got the the spikes on its tail there. Um, these things you, when they're in water, they could care less about you. All right, they they don't they're they're very docile. Um, when they're on land, they're a lot less comfortable, and so they can be aggressive. Um, they can actually jump. All right, so you want to always be careful around the heads of snapping turtles because they can jump. They can take a finger off with their um, with their um, their beaks there. And so you always have to be careful with these things. Uh, I got a picture of them crossing the road. You can always uh, springtime as turtles are looking for a place to lay eggs. They always tend to wander up on roads and cause problems up in there, but there is a snapping turtle for you. A cool, pretty cool creature. All right. Number eight would be a wood turtle. Um, these are a little bit smaller. Uh, and they're a little bit different than the others because they, they mainly like to live in woodlands. And then they, they live in like the little streams that are in there. All right. So smaller bodies of water. They have kind of this orangish colored uh, skin that you can see there on its, its legs. And then the back, the um, carapace there has like growth rings, like what you would see if you were to you know, do a cross section of a tree. So that would be a wood turtle. Okay, um, after turtles, we have about four or five just reptile um, lizards that you might see in uh, Minnesota. I should say these are all going to be found primarily um, in southern Minnesota. Um, reptiles and amphibians don't don't do particularly well in the cold months of the year. All right, the ones we have here in Minnesota are adapted for the cold, but still they you know the, the northern reaches of the state is just too much for quite a few of them. Um, the five line skink is the first one you see kind of has that bluish looking tail and that'd be a, a juvenile one or a young one. It's about five to eight inches in length. Uh, it loves living on the um, south facing rocky outcrops that we have here in, in southeast Minnesota with uh, with the bluffs. And it burrows into the rocks in the wintertime to get below the frost line. So in the wintertime, they, it burrows down in the little crevices there and just kind of goes dormant for the year. So that's the common five line skink. Next up is the prairie skink. Uh, during mating season, they have those those um, impressive kind of burnt orange or red jaws. It's got three wide tan stripes going down the back. These things are found along stream banks and oak savannas. Uh, and these are the ones that they can actually be found throughout the state. You can see them just about anywhere. Uh, and these are ones that can also... They can, these are also ones that can lose their tail. So if a predator grabs on their tail, they'll actually detach it and then just grow a new one back there. So that is the prairie skink. Number 11 um, is the sixth lined race runner, all kinds of lines going on in these things. Um, these ones are, they're actually, they're, they're pretty with their, their colors. They have a blue belly to them. They have more developed legs than the rest of the skinks, all right? So then the skinks do, sorry. Um, you see there, it looks more like lizard-like legs. Uh, once again, found in southeast Minnesota on the rocky outcrops. Uh, it's got six lines going down the back, since hence its name. And it's bright green on the sides, and then it likes to live in that that sandy slash gravel habitat. Hey, all right, I lied, only three. So there's your eleven, your first eleven Minnesota reptile species.